Hello there, everyone, and welcome to the newest episode of Sundays with Sprinkles. I'm your host, Brett Sprinkle. Joined by me is Brandon Shanahan, usually our producer behind the scenes, who we like to talk to and make fun of. Um, he hops in and out, but Tyler Sprinkle is celebrating his wife's birthday. And, you know, happy wife, happy life. So he's making sure to take the time there. So Brandon is going to join me and talk about, the, talk about the NFL. Week 16 going into week 17. Brandon, how are you doing? I'm doing great. You know, big shout out to shout out Sophia for having a birthday. Happy birthday, Sophia. Shout out for all the, the folks out there who are in their fantasy football championship games. Sorry, Brett. Also, quick side note. Um, I didn't realize when you were talking shit about my fantasy football team that you're in last place. I thought you were just like a middle of the road bad team. You're in last place. You're the worst I stopped team in our whole league. I stopped. <sighs> God damn it. I wish I would have canceled this podcast episode. I forgot that you were in the finals. I forgot that this was going to come back and hype bite me. But no, I just stopped setting my lineup like four or five weeks ago and I just got tired of it. Like I was done. And yeah, I'm in last place, but there's no last place punishment. So I'm not really that I'm not really that worried about it. Like who fucking cares? You know, I've been in first place before. You know, it's great. Last place, I don't really care. On to next season. First draft first draft pick next season. There you go. There you go. Really building tanking for the draft. I, I respect <laughs> that. You know, I, I did pull a move this week. Um preparing for the championship that i think you'd appreciate mm -hmm. um i i put a claim in for kirk cousins oh yeah yeah you know why no um i figured he'd be a good locker room guy okay i like you it know, you know get, get some morale get some good encouragement some positivity into the room i'm sure everybody's on edge i um, mean hey if he starts blaring creed in that locker room there's anything can happen absolutely. anything can happen i'm um, like if I, if even just like one person like overperforms what they're supposed to be because of Kirk, he, he's on the team. Because he's of in Kirk. the locker room, you know, and he deserves it. He deserves a. a, a was he your quarterback to start the season? Nope. Oh, you okay, see, that would have been funnier. Th that was initially what what I was going to do, but I'm like, and I don't want to. It sounds shitty the way that I'm saying this, but I'm like, nobody on my team's gotten hurt, so I don't want to. I would have absolutely oh, yeah. gone back and, and gotten somebody, but I was like, who who deserves it? I was waiting to see if uh, Russell Wilson would get dropped. I would have absolutely put a claim in for him. Mm -hmm. um, he deserves better, but we we got Kirk. I think he's a good, good locker room guy. Yeah. Uh, who's been your MVP? Who's been the MVP of your team so far this season? You would say? I would say, I would say CD Lamb's been the best player. Oh, um, dude, he's been so good. He's, he's been, been so, so good. good. Um, but probably most valuable player uh, is probably mm -hmm. Puka Nakua. I mean, yes, he's the, one of the best waiver claims of all time. Dude, just stud. I had no idea who he was until after week one. And then he was the most like, he was the most picked up waiver guy like after week one, and ever since then he's been dominant. And I'll tell you this: I didn't even kind of mean to pick him up. Like, uh, like I put in a claim for him because everybody was putting a claim in for him. But I what I I didn't know that when you're putting in waiver claims that it was in order. So like I had mm -hmm. like the I think I had the number one waiver claim, and I thought I was putting it in for Hayden Hurst, the Carolina Panthers tight end. And then my second claim was was for Puka. But it was mm -hmm. flip flopped. I accidentally put Puka first and Hayden Hurst. You can still get him if you want him. He's not very good. <laughs> but then Hayden Hurst what was ended up being number two. I, I didn't get Hayden Hurst, unfortunately. But yeah, Puka Nakua has been great. And there's just nothing better than like sitting on the on the recliner on a Sunday just screaming Puka, Puka. It's just great. It's great. It's great. Yeah, it does sound like a lot of fun. I'm actually really jealous of you. But yeah. I mean, like I said last week, kind of fun not being in the playoffs. You know, just, just watching football. Just you know it. Enveloped in, you know, just ball. Just watching ball with the boys. Don't need to worry about any stats or anything. Nobody's disappointing me except for the Broncos every Sunday. Um, and also, speaking one, of the Broncos. quick thing but, but before go we ahead. go fantasy football. Um, I just, the, I the just want to hop on fantasy football so bad. Yeah. I, I, uh, the guy I was playing <laughs> had Amari Cooper on his team. Oh. But he left him on it, the bench. Yeah. Wait, was that Austin? Yeah. It was Austin. Well, All right. Well, you beat Austin. And first off, we are a pro fuck Austin Gillen podcast. I don't like that guy. I hate his guts. And I hope nothing but bad things happen to his toes. Hope everything else is good. Hope he has a healthy wife, healthy family. Um, just don't. I just want him to stub his toe multiple times. That's I all I got. That he forgets to put Amari Cooper in his lineup and he goes off for 51 points. Yeah. I think he had another guy who fucking balled too. Uh, he was. She shared it in another group chat. I can't remember who it was. Oh, but. Man. Yeah, I, mean, so I, I, I did the math at the end of it. He wouldn't have Ball won don't anyways, lie. but I was like, that's... He wouldn't have won anyways? No. Damn. I, you fucking everybody balled out. Went, went off. It was great. And yeah, I th I'm pretty sure Austin knocked me out of the winner's bracket last year, too. So this was uh, 
which is good to get it. What did Again, it I don't think you were ever in the winner's black bracket. I don't. I don't. Dude, I'm tired of you, Mr. Last Place. <laughs> Mr. Last Place. I wish I had a, be- a more creative name for. No, I like it. I'm, I'm a big Last fan of Mr. Places. Last Place. That's good. That's good. Um, it's funny. I came in second to last in my other league, which you know I was one game away from making the playoffs. I lost to week eight. You know that that terrible story that I told a few weeks ago. Oh. Um, don't have to do any stand-up comedy at least since I came in second to last and not last place. But um, yeah, no, it's just been a rough year for fantasy for me. I just don't. Uh, it's gonna be tough to pick myself off the mat. But hey, we do it anyway. You know, you learn from these, you grow. Let me pick your your, your brain on this. One of the things that I hope to do with with, with my championship team is to lobby for uh, for us to change it to a keeper league. Do you have any thoughts about making it a keeper league? It feels like I would a good league for it. I would love to do a keeper league. I would also love to do a dynasty league. Um, I'm, I'm in one keeper league that I'm lobbing to turn into a dynasty league. I just think that would be really fun to kind of just draft rookies every single year and keep your teams and kind of just plan for the future or, you know, just go all in for the season. That sounds like a lot of fun to me. I've never done something like that, but yeah, absolutely. Keepers, yeah, keeper leagues are kind of fun. Like in my other keeper league, just for example, my three keepers were Kyle Pitts, who I drafted as a rookie. So he's, he's like my rookie exception that I get to keep every year. And then Joe Burrow was another my, one of my picks, and then uh, that I kept. And then, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Ramondre Stevenson was the third person I kept. So we get to keep three people every year from two from our last team, you know, from last year's team, and then you know just the rookie exception. Um, yeah, uh, that sucked. None of those players are on my team anymore. I had to trade Ramondre because I just needed more depth in other positions. Joe Burrow got hurt, and. Um, Kyle Pitts, I had to get rid of him. And my mental health has been so much better since he got off my team. Like, I fucking, I don't know what's going on down there. And I meant change it to a dynasty league. I didn't know that there was a middle option where you only keep some of your guys. I thought it was all or nothing. So I, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay. lobbying for a dynasty league is, is what I'm getting at. Which I no, I don't want you to have that team as a dynasty league. We should start fresh and then maybe. Well, we'll well yeah, we'll we would redraft next we'll year and then, we'll talk about and then keep them from there. But I think I think everybody's just so dialed in. I think this would be a good, and it wouldn't be that fair because I obviously figured out fantasy football, so yeah. I don't want to win all of them. So <laughs> I, okay. you know, I figured right. it kind of you know handicapped me a little bit. It made me figure this out. It'll be a couple of years, but I can't wait to beat your fucking ass next season because next season you won't have the benefit of us just drafting drunk in the middle of a house in Colorado and you just picking up the, picking off the picking off our carcasses essentially, carkies. I mean, well. Yeah, I mean, it was during the Nebraska game. If you I, win, it's an asterisk. If you win, it's an asterisk. That's, that's all I'm not saying. True at all. I mean, that's a, that's on Luke Doyle though. The fact they made it during the Nebraska game, I don't that, know what. Yeah, the fuck that he was, was bad thinking. planning, and I didn't even realize until like the day of. I'm like, this. Did he know that Wait he did second. this? This couldn't. And There's I, no way he knew because Luke was drunker than everybody. <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, no rough year for fantasy football. I mean, congratulations, I guess. I don't know. Wait, so then was I don't want to say that, but. Hmm? Was Austin with you guys in Colorado? No. Okay. Yeah. If he was, I would have fucking vomited had I'd seen him. I fucking can't stand that guy. Yeah. I'm, I'm just kidding. I love Austin. Big fan of Austin. Shout out. Big shout out. Um. So moving on, week 16, not that eventful for me. Broncos fucking got beat Sunday night football on Christmas Eve. Um. Some good things happened. The Bills won. They keep their streak going. So my Bills Super Bowl pick is looking really, really good. The Chiefs fucking are imploding right now, and I, I want to just dance on that grave. Taylor Swift. I've always, I've always been a big Taylor Swift fan. If she completes the dismantling of the Kansas City Chiefs in its current form, I'm all in on Taylor Swift. I fucking yes. I saw you fuck. I saw you. I saw you retweet that the other day. It's like I love that. That's so fucking funny. It's fantastic. It's phenomenal. It's perfect. It's there's no better way to describe. I mean, well, do you I remember? Juice, <laughs> yeah, fucking oh, those pieces of shit. Do you remember uh, a couple months ago when they first started getting together? There was that TikTok of some girl breaking it down. It's like you know Taylor Swift is a Philly fan. She's gonna start dating Travis Kelsey right yeah. now. She's gonna get him okay. all hyped up. Gonna get him all going. And then during the playoffs time, she's gonna start ruining it. She's gonna start dismantling that team. She's gonna and it's gonna be the greatest <laughs> like Eagles like inside job ever. And I think it's working. It's definitely happening. You know what the. Ev- I'll, I'll say this. I don't know if that's true or not. If it were true, this is what it would look like. Yes. Yeah. It's it's a master class in manipulation and grandstanding and also just getting her brand out there. She's just winning. 
Like, yeah, you're gonna you get those losers online talking about how they hate Taylor Swift. Hey, she's not the one pointing the camera at herself. The NFL is pointing the camera at herself because they know the Chiefs are fucking trash. They don't want to show that filth on the field. Yeah. So show Taylor Swift in the box. You know, a beautiful fan who's very very famous and roots for really bad football sometimes, just like we all do. And I'll tell you what, I, at the beginning of this whole saga, I was very upset. I'm like. For God's sakes, I can't enjoy one thing in this world. I used to enjoy like watching quarterbacks play, and then Patrick Mahomes came in. And I'm like, oh, I hate watching quarterbacks now. I'd rather just watch mm-hmm. Trevor Simeon and Case Keenum. I think they're more entertaining quarterbacks. Um, and then I was like, oh, well, at least I have Taylor Swift. At least I, you know, all the all her new records, of Taylor's version. I named my fantasy football league after one of her songs. I mean, I'm dialed into Taylor Swift, and I'm oh, now I can't even enjoy that. But yeah. but yeah, if this does come full circle to where it's just an inside hit job, well worth it. Well worth it. And then it. she, yeah, she did. All, all I need is just for her to drop him, like division, like they'll win the wild card round, sure. But just like fucking dump him, divisional round. He's in shambles. He probably doesn't even play that game. He's just in shambles. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, he's just sitting there crying about that uh, that offsides call a couple weeks ago, still. Like he's just still complaining about that call. Eight inches offsides. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I said offsides because he was he was barely. We get a warning for that, even if he's in the fucking opposing team's end zone. Like, yeah, no, it's completely totally fine. We get a warning on that. Pussies, I can't stand them. But yeah, couldn't be happier. They're imploding. The Raiders beat their ass. I'm never really happy to see the Raiders win unless it's against a division rival. And their defense just really put a beat down on the Chiefs' offense, and it was really really fun to see. I feel like as a Broncos fan, um, like growing up, my my hate was pretty well allocated to all three of those teams. Um, Mm -hmm. Now I. Like it's just solely on the Chiefs. I just don't feel anything for the Raiders and, and the Chargers. I feel a little bit worse. But it's because they haven't really won that much recently. Yeah. Um. It's is so it's unfortunate the way I look at it. And well, here let me ask you this. So are the Chiefs that team? Uh, I'll ask you the question now. So like, if there's one team who you never want to see them have success, like if you're looking at you know like how the Packers fans would look at Lions fans, you know they haven't won, you know they haven't had a home playoff game in you know 30 years, they haven't won a playoff game in 60 years. Um, so like you want to be happy for the Lions, but if I'm a Packers fan or if I'm a Vikings fan, I would say fuck that. Who's that one team who you don't want to see them have any success, no matter when it is, no matter how long the drought's been? Who's that one team? Is it the Chiefs? Yeah, yeah, by a mile. Um, I, I think the the, the Patriots kind of get some get get lumped in there with all their success. Um, a lot of people hate the Cowboys for various reasons. They probably lump them in that group. Of course, those division rivals up north are are on a different level. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, for me, it is the Chiefs. Um, at, by by a pretty significant margin, I I'm actively praying for for the horrible things to happen, all the time. Praying, um, praying. On my knees, begging whatever <laughs> deity is out there to help me out. Um, oh, also, can you please? I'm sorry, sorry, no, go ahead. And, well, and just I, I remember so vividly when when they won their first Super Bowl. I'm like, I hate that this is happening because I was so much happier bef- when this wasn't a, an occurrence. Yeah. So whenever they won the first Super Bowl, I thought the same, especially because the Niners had a chance to win it there. That was unfortunate. Yeah. I'm kind of of the mindset that Patrick Mahomes is inevitable. Like he's, just, I mean, he's just good. Like he's just, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. He's going to go down as a Hall of Fame quarterback. He's extremely talented. There's really nothing we can do about it. So honestly, the Chiefs winning, I'm numb to it at this point. But that guy, the Raiders are that team for me. I don't want to see the Raiders have success at all. I don't care when it is. I don't care where it is. It could be 60 years from now. They haven't won. They've gone three and 13 every single year since. I don't fucking care. If they get that fourth win, I'm going to be upset. You know what I mean? I just can't stand the Raiders. Yeah. Everything they do, everything they touch just turns to shit. It, you know, they say commitment to excellence. Well, it's actually the commit, commitment to excrement. And I can't stand them. They're a shitty organization. And I'm so happy that they're there. They are, they are where they are. Even though Aaron, Pro, even, <clears throat> excuse me, even though Aaron Pierce is kind of awesome. Yeah, he is. He is pretty great. I, and it, and, and it's great because they're not going to keep him, right? They're not going to. No, keep yeah, no, they're so going to give Lincoln gonna... Riley like a ton of money, and then, uh, <laughs> <just> like <laughs> that, then that'll be that. Or Mark Stoops probably. But the thing is, like, the Raiders don't have any money to give to anybody because they're still paying John Gruden and Josh McDaniels. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they might. They might. And, and Mark Davis is afraid that he can't even afford the inheritance tax on his franchise. So no I'm kidding. Yeah, I, that's it. That's insane. Um. That that's probably a good point. I, because I think when the Chiefs were awful, because let's not forget they used to be awful. God, they, awful. they used to be the worst team in, in the NFL. But still, so annoying. Remember yeah. Priest Holmes? Remember Dante Hall? That piece of shit, dude. Dante Hall. He's still running. <coughs> he's a he's a he's a nightmare. 
Um, but I don't <coughs> think that I enjoyed their their incompetence as much as the Raiders. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess that there's some truth there. I guess this next time around when, as they're falling apart. I'm way Once more Andy Reid retires, that's when I'm starting to yeah, hopping on the hate bandwagon. Like right now, I'm just, yeah. they're, I'm nothing. The Broncos aren't good enough to compete, so it's just the Chiefs division to lose every single year. Next year, though, when Stidham gets, you know, a couple games under his belt, Stidham, the starting quarterback moving forward, I can't wait. Jared Stidham season is here. I'm so tired. I'm so tired of like... Dude, that's why I said. I texted somebody on Monday, and I said, uh, like, I really... If the Chiefs lose this game, I have to be back in on the Broncos, and I'm just exhausted at this point. Because now, I mean, we still have a chance at the division, I think, since they lost. I could be wrong. I don't know. Oh, dude, I, just, I, I want it to be done. I, I, I know. I just want the over. season to be over, dude. I can't do it anymore. Yeah, I also um, nickel for every time the Broncos ruined my Christmas holiday. I'd have two nickels. It's weird that it's happened in back-to-back years, but here we are. Yeah, kind of crazy how that keeps happening. I, I mean, we it, ban the NFL on Christmas. I'm tired of this. At least the Broncos playing on Christmas. Yeah. Like, make them play the 27th every single year. Doesn't matter what day it's on. Yeah. Just get get it over with. Let let me go. Let me go to work that day, and then so I can be miserable. So that way I have I'm in the right mindset whenever I come yeah, home. Just make it like a noon game on a yeah on like a Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> on the on like the, it's like those uh, NCAA network. tournament games, yeah. like those NCAA tournament games on the first couple of days. Put it on True TV, <laughs> so I don't have to watch it. Have impractical jokers playing immediately <laughs> afterwards, because uh, that's all it is—just one big impractical joke. That's what it feels like. But I mean, now that we're on the subject of the Broncos, I tried to segue earlier before we started talking about your shitty fucking fantasy football team even more. Sorry, really good fantasy football team. That was a Freudian slip. That's my bad. Um. Broncos benching Russ after that loss that pretty much puts them completely out of playoff contention against the uh, the three and sorry excuse me now four and eleven Patriots. Uh, I what were your initial thoughts when you read the news? Well, it's it's evolved quite a bit since then. At at the the beginning, I, oh. it kind of made sense. I, oh yeah, do you want to just break down the timeline for everybody? Yeah, so 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 the timeline for me at least. Um, like the, the whole timeline from from the yeah yeah, yeah. like when when the bitching yeah. happened and all this news has come out and the Sean Payton press conference yeah so uh, they lost to the Patriots Russell Wilson was was pretty bad and it more than that it didn't feel like Sean Payton was going out of his way to put him in positions to to cook per se as the kids as the youth would call it youths and and they lose to a really bad bad Patriots team at home. Ruined my Christmas. Ruined all the Christmases of America. I threw away all of my presents after that loss. Yeah. Nobody I mean, got I, Christmas. Yeah, it's all over. I went to went, went to the office on Christmas Day. I'm like, this is just a regular day from here on out. <laughs> um, so that was disappointing. I didn't. And then it was announced earlier this week that Jared Stidham would be starting, which at the time was was fine. I, obviously, <clears throat> to me, it seemed pretty clear that with the way that Sean Payton had called these last two games in particular, that he didn't believe that Russ was the guy. So he was doing everything he can to get the ball not in his hands and not giving Russ a, an opportunity to, to play his ball. And then it, it, the reports coming out and then confirmed by more reporters that this whole fiasco had started back in, after the Kansas City game, which, by the way, if you remember, that's basically our Super Bowl is when we won that game. And then no, that was day. my Super Bowl. I want that on yeah. the record. That was my Super Bowl. That that was everything to me. That's all I needed to see the season. And the season would have been a success, and it was. Agreed. Agreed and agreed. So then, after that game, after the Broncos just win their their latest Super Bowl, uh, Sean Payton four. And company it's four Super Bowls <laughs> count them. <laughs> went to Russell Wilson and company and said, "We are going to bench you if you don't remove your injury protection in your contract." that we negotiated like 18 months ago. Mm-hmm. And he said, no, why would I? That and shitty thing. Well, I guess we'll talk about the analysis here. Uh, then I, I don't know what happened between then and, and the next Sunday where he, he played against the Bills. And well, they had a bye week that week too. He did have a bye week. That, that's right. Yeah. So, well, so then that's even more time than I'm un, un, unaccounted for because he started the Bills game. I thought he played very well the Bills game. And then he went on this five-game winning streak where he did – I thought he was playing very well. He was playing very yeah. efficient football. And then I guess he had down, down the stretch that streak, he, he started 
Tyler likes to point out how much he fumbles. He does. He does do that quite a bit. Um, he fumbled a couple times on Sunday too, and I, I uh, it's fucking time. I can't stop. All I do is think about Tyler every time I see Russ drop the ball. It pisses know, me off. It's like he's he's right. He's, <laughs> he got him. I just see his face on the fucking field. His stupid fucking face. And so now it all, all signs are pointing that the Broncos. So the the logic for Sean Payton and company, I think, were to we're gonna we want to bring you back to training camp next year. But we don't want to have a guarantee that we have to pay you $40 million next year if we decide to go a different direction before the season. And Russell I, obviously says no to that. Um, and then, yeah, they lose to the Patriots. They bench him. And now all signs are indicating that the Russell Wilson era in Denver is over not even two seasons after we traded three, two first-round picks, a franchise quarterback, and it's a great Omaha high school football product, Noah Fans. Wait, Noah Fans from Omaha? Omaha South. I did not know that. Hey, yeah. things you learn every day. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, franchise quarterback Drew Locke. That sucks. Um, somehow the Seahawks are still winning the game with G- winning games with Geno Smith. I don't know how you don't go back to Drew Locke after that performance, but you know what? <clears throat> let my guy cook. You know, let my guy sit around for a little bit more. Let him. You know, he's got to warm back up. Got to preheat the oven some more. Yeah, and it's like, well. Just let it ride, I guess. I mean, it, mm-hmm. as a Seahawks person, the best case scenario is Drew Locke is, is actually him. Mm-hmm. Oh, like he just unlocked something there? That'd be interesting. That'd be awesome. Yeah. So I, I don't mean, know. Sounds like Denver's looking for a new quarterback next year. Wouldn't it be a shame if the Broncos got him back? And Noah Fant and Shelby Harris? Just give us all our shit back. <laughs> just give us all, all the picks back. And the picks, too. I want them all back. You know it's like what? draft day. Give them all back. I mean, they're not great picks. You, they can keep the picks. <laughs> they can keep the picks. Um, no, yeah. So, I mean, I'm kind of of the same mind as you. Um, I think, especially now that we're kind of out of it, it does make sense to kind of bench Russ. Uh, there's really no point for him to play. Don't want to guarantee you know his injury, con- you know, his contract. The asking him to you know wave his claws and threatening to bench him just after like two days after the Chiefs game it was a little bizarre and I look at it as the Broncos front office just really embarrassed by them making that deal I think they're just embarrassed I think they want to move on they were either pressured into doing it by the new ownership or they just took a chance on something and it didn't work out and you know, you go and trade for the guy you have to sign him you have to give him all the money you know that was market value for a quarterback at the time whatever like that's fine but they're embarrassed with their decisions and Sean Payton comes in. He didn't make that decision. He's putting pressure on them to move on, move on, move on. So for the Broncos brass, that's really the only thing they can ask him to do is wave that clause. So that way, you know, they have a lot more flexibility in the upcoming off season. Just like you said, um, it's unfortunate the timing, but it just more and more as you just, as the season goes on. And even some of the things Sean Payton was saying to begin with, it just sounds like Sean Payton was just getting tired of Russ. And everyone's talking about the stats, and I even saw you getting into the discourse a little bit. You know, 26 touchdowns, seven interceptions. You know, he's, he's having a great season. It's so easy to say the stats, but you're not watching the games if you're just talking about stats. He doesn't look comfortable in the pocket. He take he self-sacks a lot. He doesn't force the – he doesn't take any chances downfield. He's always looking to dink and dunk. He's afraid to throw it. And – I don't know. I think now that we're out of playoff – like if we're in playoff contention, he is the he is our best bet. Now that we're out of it, you know, it's time to move on. And there was a couple points in that game where he could have taken over, and he almost did. And it was really awesome to see him kind of hype the defense up, you know, for that last drive. And I really thought we were going to go down and fucking win that game because everyone was just talking sh- mad shit. It's like the Broncos looked focused. They looked ready to go. And then obviously, you know, we call a couple timeouts. They get a big first down. And the kicker who can't fucking hit anything just hits a 52-yarder for no reason. That was annoying. You know how mad I was during that last drive? Uh, I, I audibly said out loud, damn it, we should have we should have drafted Justin Fields after Patrick Dan got cooked, <laughs> which is nonsense. I'm, I'm at, Now that I've come down, I'm absolutely still a Pat guy. But I was like, God, get him off of my team. Get me Justin Fields in here. Yeah. Get fucking, I want Pat Sertan Sr. I'm tired of this junior guy. No, I hear you. It was kind of unfortunate. And, I mean, it is Jared Stidham season. He's our guy. Uh, I'm not looking forward to watching the last two games. I forgot that Jared Siddham was on our team. I kind of wish we still had Brett Rippon. That would be more fun for me. Let it rip. Um, I'm a bit. Yeah, let it rip. I'm a big Brett Rippon guy. Uh, so the Broncos are going to be in the market for a new quarterback. Now we're going to be drafting. Thanks to Russ and all of his efforts. Now we're going to be drafting in the mid-teens. So that's good. I don't know what 
quarterback prospects we're kind of looking at there. Maybe a Penix Jr., depending on how you know how good of a combine and pro day he has and what the discourse is throughout the whole draft process. I don't know. Anything can happen. Obviously, there's a lot of – it seems like the Broncos are planning for the future. It seems like they're doing it right now as opposed to waiting until the season's over, so we'll see. I think we're in the playoffs next season, though. I don't care who the quarterback is. I think we're in the playoffs next season. So real quick, you, you pointed to my Twitter. This is the tweet that, that I responded to. It's Mark Schlereth. I fucking hate Mark Schlereth. And all, and I love all Mark happens. Schlereth. I love nope, him. I, I love Mark Schlereth. A, I love him that he's a, a proud former Denver Bronco, but he, he fucking sucks. Out I I love – I watch when he breaks down film. I like it when he breaks down film. He's very, very smart, and he does it. He, he's really good at getting out information. That's what I like about Mark Schlereth. Okay, maybe. 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 <laughs> but but this tweet right here is is what pissed me off because he – so he's responding to somebody who says – who's pointing out that Russ had 26 touchdowns and eight interception on the, te- uh, on the season, seventh-rated passer. Uh, then Mark Schlereth comes out with this fucking oxymoron, says, look at the tape. It isn't great, and production doesn't come close to matching salary. That disrespectful, just fact. Well, which is it, buddy? Because 26 touchdowns and 8 interceptions is fact. That is objective. He is very much thrown 26 touchdowns and 8 interceptions. <coughs> you can't come out here and say, oh, well, it's actually the eye test. Not, it's my subjective <coughs> analysis. Which, by the way, he's, he's probably right. I mean, he's right. 100%. He's right. He's right. Because the person he's responding to is just saying, oh, wait, no, you're looking at this and they're making Russ the scapegoat. No, they're not making Russ the scapegoat. He's just he – you're, 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 you're focusing on you're focusing on the first part. You're not focusing on the important part, which it, it, you know immediately prefaces – you know, sorry, you know, not to no disrespect, just fact. He's saying performance does not – wait, what was the last – what was that line again? Performance does not um, – Come close to matching salary. Ma- come close to matching salary. That that's is, fact. That is – That's no, fact. That, that's subjective. It's right, but – I don't think I don't think we're on the same page on what a fact is. No, I guess okay. I see what you're saying. That and, is subjective, I guess. Me off. And also yeah, Mark Schlereth okay. typically does. So that, so it, it just seemed I ironic to me that he would go, Well, just look at the tape. Also, that's just a fact. Not your actual <laughs> fact, but my eyes are facts. Your facts aren't facts. Also, um, while you got Twitter up, can you please show me one of those tweets where somebody's like, You have to be sick to blah 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 and you're just in in the hospital bed? Oh, that's yeah, my new favorite yeah. meme right now. I love it. It's my favorite. Oh man. <laughs> oh, it's it, so fucking funny. It, it kills me every time. I saw you do it like three times over the weekend. I was like, oh, yeah. I love it. I, every time I laughed hard. Oh, uh, so let's see here. So there's uh so there's this one that's uh that's in response to you have to be a sick motherfucker to be enjoying the Patrick Mahomes downfall. And You're... <laughs> oh, let's see. And then, and then there's at least another. There's at least one more. Okay, so there's this one. You got to be a sick individual if you want to see Jim Harbaugh host the college football playoff championship trophy. I I don't know where this one came from. Now that I'm reading it out loud, um, I think I just really wanted to post this picture in this context. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because um, I really don't care if, if Michigan wins the wins the championship. Hey, it's better for the Big Ten. More money to go around. And I, I know you're saying Nebraska doesn't have to worry about money, but like everybody has to worry about money. It's, yeah, you know, it's more fucking it's the world we live in. Um, I do hope they beat Alabama by a million um, to prove that Alabama's and the SEC in general is fraudulent. So that's my I, idea. I, I think it's going to be similar to most seasons in the college football playoffs where it's just the national championship is during the, you know, the semis and then, you know, the the winner of the like, I think the national championship right now is Alabama versus Michigan. That's my just humble opinion. Um, and then whoever wins between Texas and Washington is playing for second place at that point. That's what I think. I think Michigan is going to win, but who knows? I could probably be wrong. I'm an idiot. Yeah, it it would it yeah. would be very it would be very <laughs> funny if Michigan did not win. Um, and well, they just they got blown team. out. And and then Jim, this is the best Michigan team since the '90s. And then Jim Harbaugh is 0 three in the playoff. Uh, goes to the NFL and the NCAA hits Michigan with a bunch of sanctions, and and they're awful now. And they that would be awesome. A college football playoff win to 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 back it up with. So that would be funny and to the, me. And you know what they do? Everyone just decommits from Michigan and just goes straight to Iowa. It's like, hey, you well, know, let's down. yellow down there. There's yellow well, down there. It's, 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 that's what. That's the only reason going to Michigan is for the yellow. It's like, well, I guess we gotta go somewhere else. <laughs> but the well and. So the, the thing that really upsets me about this Russ situation is that it, it didn't feel like Sean Payton. Because I've, I've been told this whole year, and I've bought into this Kool-Aid that Sean Payton is an offensive genius. Um, I'm in the camp that he turned 
uh, mediocre quarterback Drew Brees into a Hall of Famer. Um, so I thought it, it just never felt to me like he wrapped his arms around Russ. Because when he let Russ, I hate saying this so many times, but when he let Russ cook, I thought he played very well whenever it was in like uh, mm-hmm. last minute situations where they needed him to make some plays. He made a lot of plays during that time. And that's exactly what you pay $40 million for a quarterback for. That's exactly why he moved on from Drew Russell, from not Drew Russell, um, Drew Locke, is that he couldn't make those plays in, in crunch time as mm-hmm. often. So I, it just never felt like he, he gave Russ the best opportunity to win. And it stinks because they were down the down the stretch of, you know, in the playoff hunt. Yeah, no, I mean, don't get me wrong. I wanted to be crystal clear. Like, I I became a big fan of Russ. You know how we tear people down just to build them back up. I've been riding, I've been riding with Russ for the majority of this season. It's been great because he has been a leader. He has, he has led this team to some big moments. And you could tell, like, especially when he scrambles, like, he – he wants to win. Like I, I, I was talking about, you know, that that scene at the end of the game on Sunday. You know, it, it was a rough game for him. You know, he was hyping the guys up. He said, the "Defense, get me the fucking ball back. Give me the fucking ball back. Let's go win this thing." I loved it. Like I was like, "Okay, that's a fucking that's the leader. That's the guy. That's the guy you trade for." To be honest, um, it's very clear though that he isn't the guy that Sean Payton wants, and. <clears throat> Sean Payton has been very critical about what the Broncos organization did last season, specifically personnel wise. And I think he just wants a fresh start. And the best way to do that is just get rid of that. Um, I don't think cancer is the right word. It's just, you know, just fresh start. He yeah. He just wants a fresh start. Years. Yeah. He just wants a fresh start. He just wants a new quarterback that he can utilize, you know, tutelar, he, he can, you know, teach, he can, you know, guide him. And I think that's what he's really looking for. Uh, that being said, if Russ gets cut this offseason, which he's looking like he most likely will, I think he's still I think he's a starting quarterback next season for Absolutely. somebody. I think so too. Because there's not there's not a lot of good starting quarterbacks in the league right now. And I think a team like a team like Atlanta would like he'd be great on, I feel like. I think so. The only thing uh, is he would have to hang out with future a lot more than be gun tough. I was gonna say I I I, w- I I was gonna bring that up. I, I don't know if that's the best scene for him, but it makes you know. <laughs> Makes football. Sense. Or he goes to New Orleans, just beats the fuck out of <laughs> them every year, Atlanta. Um, there you go. They could use them. Um, so so, and I'm sure we'll get into this more in the off season. But what is your gut telling you that the Broncos do at quarterback next year? Do you think they draft a guy first round? Do you think they go back to the mediocre quarterback well that they've lived in for the last ten years? I don't think you can cut Russ and go back to the mediocre quarterback well because if that's the case, you might as well just keep Russ. I know the contract implications are a thing, and, I mean, you're going to be paying that guy anyway. It doesn't really make any sense. Uh, you got to draft a quarterback. It depends. Like, it just really depends on who you draft and where you draft him. But the guys that are coming out this season, I don't really want to see them draft a, like a mid-first-round quarterback you just never know. Like there's so many guys you just never know. And I'm so tired of missing on like big, like people like Paxton Lynch, Brock Oswald. I'm just tired of fucking missing. Um, we had drew lock. We had the guy, we could let him slip, but you know, Hey, you might get back on our graphs, you know, just throw a little line out, see what happens. See if he comes back. But yeah, I think we, I think we go in the, I think we go to the drafts. Hopefully there's some Brock Purdy type who we just find for no reason. And he just becomes a God and throws four interceptions with the seat, you know, with the first seat on the line. Um, That'd be great. I'd actually prefer that. Yeah, it, I I think that's the winning formula, and I, and I, you answered the question very well because you're still paying Russell Wilson his fat salary next year, so you can't go out and spend another fifteen million dollars on a quarterback. Um, so I, I think that the draft is is probably their best bet. It looks like mock drafts right now have J.J. McCarthy being drafted right around the middle of the first round. That would be my nightmare scenario. I do not want fucking J.J. McCarthy. I've seen that Michigan offense. It doesn't look fun, and I don't want that for my team. Let me uh, l- l- let me pitch this to you. Um, what if – I know that Sean Payton doesn't – Give me Bo Nix over fucking J.J. McCarthy. I, I'm not going to – Was he going back for his 18th season yet? Or has <laughs> no, he, no, dis- no. he declared? No, Oregon has already – Replaced him and you okay. know, got a backup that they would probably start over him next. Good. Year. Um, it's it's clear that Sean Payton doesn't care about draft capital. Do you think that they just send their future away to get a guy like Caleb Williams? No, because we don't have the fucking depth. Like that's that's our problem. We just don't have the guys. And I think the 
you know, credit to this entire coaching staff and Vance Joseph have very much been a part of this. Like the coaching for this team has just been incredible this season. The, the, the strides that they've made since the beginning of the season, I'm not even talking about the Miami Dolphins game. I'm talking about week one, just how out of sync everybody looked. Nobody really knew what they were doing. Nobody really understood their assignment. And then just to see the defense play now and just see all these guys, all these studs, like PJ locks finally looking good. Alex Singleton still one of my favorite linebackers in the league. Um, fucking our outside linebackers. Uh, is it, uh, Browning, yeah, we got Bear Browning, Browning we got and Jonathan um, Cooper. Jonathan Cooper, yeah, he's the other guy. I fucking Drew love Sanders those guys. Some, some Drew balls. Sanders, he hasn't. I haven't. He hasn't wowed me on the screen yet, but I know he. I've heard about his potential. I know the, I know the Broncos there, really. Which is exciting. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. Hey, every time I play a Madden franchise, he's always a superstar death. So hey, you know, he always ends up ninety overall, win a couple defensive players of the years. I'll take that. Yes, yeah, I'm up for that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to see when. Drew Brees joined the how old Drew Brees was when he joined the chart uh, joined the Saints. I think he was still in his twenties, so he was not he wasn't like thirties whenever Russ got there. So yeah, I know I was I was thinking about what you said. He turned a mediocre quarterback into a Hall of Famer. No, I think you're wrong. I think Drew I think uh, Drew Brees was a very good quarterback before that. I w- I would I don't want to go out too deep on my Drew Brees slander. I do think if the Saints had prime Brock Purdy. They wouldn't be two Super Bowls. I'll just say that. Ooh, interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. There's really it was a fun season. This season was fun. It was good to get a couple wins. Like that winning streak was everything for me because it's just been such a long time of losing. And we would go like we would be eight and nine, nine and eight with Vic Bangio and. <clears throat> It would be it wouldn't be winning streaks. It'd be win one, lose one, win one, lose one, lose two, win one. Like you know what I mean? It would just be every other. So that winning streak was just so much fun to be a part of. It was just it made it so much fun to root for the Broncos again. And uh, I think Sean Payton has this team going in the right direction. I don't think people are saying Russ is being made to be a scapegoat. I don't think that's being the case. I think that's the narrative right now. I don't think he's being made to be the scapegoat. I just think that they're in a bad situation. They want out of it, and this is the best way to move forward from a business standpoint. And I kind of agree. It's sad. I love Russ, and I hope I wish nothing but the best for him, because he has. I mean, he's completely changed the narrative on himself. And um, I, sorry, my blind cat's climbing the cat tree, and she's really high up right now, and I don't know how she's getting down. She keeps going up. Actually, okay, I'm gonna go help her. Um, I'm trying to think of a topic we can discuss while I walk away, but uh, I can go on a Drew Brees slander rant if you want. Now that yeah, I'm go mad. slander Drew Brees for me. I'll be right back. Drew Brees. All right, I get it. He threw for a trillion yards. But, like, when push came to shove, that team, the teams that he played on were so good that he should have won more. And every time that the, the, the lights got so bright, he's Donald Trump on the campaign. Turn those lights off. It's too bright in here. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, he had an opportunity against a wash Tom Brady. Let Tom Brady walk all, all into the Super Bowl. There was that a controversial call against the Rams in the playoffs where, yes, that probably should have been called a pass interference, sure. But also, who threw an interception in overtime? The first opportunity he got, that's Drew Brees. I'm just saying, and I, I don't like being on the side of Emmanuel Acho, but he did say that Brock Purdy is a more athletic Drew Brees. I think that's absolutely true. And I think if, uh, and by the way, we haven't seen <coughs> prime Brock Purdy yet. This is year two Brock Purdy. You can't just lump him in with, with Drew Brees. Drew Brees stinks, Brock Purdy clears by year five. Okay, so I just want to apologize to all of our listeners that you had to listen to that. That was pure and utter nonsense. I don't know what the fuck he was talking about. Uh, but thank you for filling, Brandon. You know, it's, hey, it takes a lot of courage to, you know, vamp, and I appreciate you doing that. I Well, I as a sports better, I've never won more money than betting against Drew Brees. So I'll, I'll, I'll just say that. And uh, look, I've never made more money than I have betting against Drew Brees in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Okay. Even though they did get hosed a couple times in the playoffs. Especially recently, more so recently. I mean, he had a chance to win. Just like <laughs> sure did. I mean, like, just don't throw an interception. I, don't that throw was even an before interception. Before they change the overtime rules, just get to the forty-five yard line, mm. and you got facts. You got so okay, no, couldn't do that. Couldn't do it. Look at. I apologize, everybody. We're going to move on to week 17 now, get through these games. Uh, there's a lot of games, like not a lot of playoff implications in a lot of them. We're going to definitely emphasize a few, um, but uh, and then go over the playoff picture and how it stands right now. Um, we have Jets and Browns on Thursday night. That game's actually going on as we're taping this. Um, I saw the Jets score early, but the Browns, I think they might have just scored. 
seven seven start. Not bad. He's back. Joe. I am actually so fucking jealous of Browns fan because it looks like so much fun to root for Joe Flacco right now, especially after that Texans game last week and how him and Amari Cooper were just lighting it up. That looked like so much fun. I saw a tweet because um, I, I guess uh, Joe Flacco had gotten like uh, like Nickelodeon's Player of the Week equivalent, and so they were you know giving him the, the slime bath. Oh no, it was Amari Cooper and Joe Flacco like said he'd do the oh, slime for him. Oh, that's yeah. right. Uh, that's yeah, right. Um, you really dialed into to the Nickelodeon stuff, huh? I, I, I only watch Nickelodeon. That's how I get all my NFL news. Like everything that I tell you here is from in Nickelodeon. That's all my sidebar facts. to my sidebar. I haven't watched Nickelodeon since Christmas Day last year, and I refuse. After hearing Patrick <laughs> Starr's reaction to Russell Wilson's pick <laughs> six, disgusting. Um, yeah, fuck. I forgot all about that too. Fuck. But I saw a Browns fan uh, quote tweet it and basically say something like, "It's so refreshing to have a quarterback that you can put on children's television." It's been a while. Been a while. <laughs> yeah, dude, that was really that was fucking hilarious. That was really good. That was a really good tweet. So yeah, I love Joe uh, Flacco. I'm glad that they got the quarterback of the future. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, 30, 38 year old Joe Flacco. He's definitely the quarterback of the future. One hundred percent. Uh and honest and their kicker went out like he got hurt during the game last week. So it was just it was just it was just boys slinging the ball around, dude. It was just it was just backyard football out there. They were just slinging it. No kicker in sight. Just hey, we don't need it. Just give me the ball. Get out of the way. I loved it. Um uh oh, fumble and the Browns recover. Nice. Okay, I was gonna, I was gonna say I like the Browns in this game, but uh, looks like it's so oh, looks like it's looking pretty good. Uh, first game we have this is Monday Night Football, but it's on Saturday, so ESPN's doing the coverage. Primetime game: Lions at Cowboys. Spreads minus six in favor of the Cowboys in Dallas. I want to hear your thoughts on this game. Miami or uh, Dallas coming off a tough defeat in Miami last week. They were kind of right there. Those are just a really good game played by two really good teams. Lions clinched their first division title in over 30 years. Uh, actually, no first division title ever, I think, since they joined the NFC North. Yep. And uh, the uh, so hangover, maybe for the Lions? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, Tyler would be throwing up if he were here because he doesn't believe in hangover games or get right games. And I think that we got a little bit of both here. I think that the Lions, um, I don't think that they're really in the race for the one seed in the NFC. So I don't think that there's a whole lot of, of, of movement for them upward. Um, yeah, the well, I guess they could. But I, I do think that's th- that was such a huge moment. And I, and I am very happy that they're – that they're there. I do think they come down to earth a little. I think the Cowboys dial it in a, a little bit more. And then the Cowboys have been so funny because all their games, minus last week, seem to be blowouts. Either they're rolling over bad teams or they're, or they're getting, getting rolled, rolled over themselves. Yeah. Like it's so funny to watch a team just be on both ends of that spectrum so often. So if I think the Cowboys are going to win, I, yeah, I, I think that they'll cover that, that spread. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. And plus, I mean, too tough. I mean, they got their ass beat in Buffalo. That sucks. But then, you know, that tough game in Miami, they really wanted to win that game. They didn't. It fell short a little bit. I think they come out of this game pissed off. And they're at home. So, you know, that's their, you know, win the ones at home while you can. They won't have a home game during the playoffs, it looks like. So they better, you know, win all the games they can. And they'll probably lose first round of the playoffs, as the Cowboys do. And it's hilarious every single year. It's hilarious every single time. And I just can't wait. It's my it's favorite part. Of, it's my favorite part of the year. Yeah. Every time the Cowboys get eliminated, it's my favorite part of the year. I don't know. Something about it. It's just like <laughs> I'm home. Like, it feels like I'm home. I uh, Yeah, it's never not funny. Especially, I think a couple of years ago, it was on Nickelodeon. And everybody was uh, was lobbying for, for Dak to be MVP. Yes. Which yes. they stopped doing that. And and that, that was another robbery of the Broncos last year is that they were, we they didn't were get so an bad MVP. so early that yeah. they just didn't let any Broncos be on the on the ballot. It was sad. It was really Russell sad. Because making MVP Russ, yeah, voted like writing in Russell Wilson for the MVP uh, would have been uh, would have been yeah, Chef's kiss. Yeah, for uh, sure. I'm right there with you. Right there with you. All right, we're both in agreement here. we both got the Cowboys. That makes sense. It's gonna be Joe Buck and Troy Aikman on the call, so Aikman usually brings the Cowboy magic every time he's in Dallas. But moving on to Sunday, New Year's Eve, December 31st. The first game on our list right here is Dolphins at Ravens. Games in Baltimore. Ravens favored by three and a half. Big game. Ravens coming off a huge victory in San Francisco. Beat the piss out of the 49ers. 49ers are reeling. Brock Purdy, four interceptions. He's out of the MVP. He's out of the MVP conversation, it sounds like. Lamar Jackson has fairly planted, planted himself in the MVP favorite category. 
Ravens are looking good, playing their best ball, looking to go into the playoffs hot. Dolphins, I think they want to shed this soft team label. You know, can't win, can't beat good teams label. On the road, major test for them. I think the Dolphins come out and look to smash the Ravens in the mouth. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, this is kind of a, a de facto uh, AFC regular season championship game. Uh, they're both sit, sitting right there. I think the Dolphins, yeah, looks like the Dolphins have the tiebreaker over the Ravens if it were to come down to it. So No common opponents? Yeah. So it's interesting. I mean, that's a huge, huge spot getting that, that first It's a big game. By. Big game. It's a big game. Um, boy, I don't, I don't even know who I like this. I, I don't like Miami on the road, but boy, it's just. I'm rooting for him. I'll say that. I'm rooting for him. It looks like this game is going to be for the I'm trying to see. The Browns have to win this game in order to stay in contention for the NFC, AFC North. But uh, yeah, I mean, this game could. You're right. This game could very well decide the for number one seed and number one seed for either team is going to be huge. Obviously, you get that bye week with the home field advantage, especially for a team like Miami. They don't have to go anywhere cold. That would be great for them. Uh, the Ravens, you know, Lamar Jackson, he likes to poop in his own toilet. And, you know, he's going to have the shits and he's going to need to figure it out. And I think he, they would like to stay closer to Baltimore. So, yeah, this is going to be a really, really good game. I'm excited for this game. This game's going to be um, the, the the game on Sunday that I'm most excited to see, to be honest. I think so, too. Should be good. Um, Moving on. Sorry, I lost my thing. Patriots at Bills. I highlighted this game because the Bills are obviously on you know, my Super Bowl pick right now because I'm an idiot. Uh, they need to win, obviously. I think if they win, they have a 90, 97% of chance to make the playoffs. If they lose, it's down to 45. So still have a chance, but it's not looking great. They're going to need some help. They're hot. They're on fire. They kind of stumbled a little bit last year or last week. But, I mean, as we mentioned on the you know, previous podcast, you know, the dead coach bump. You know, they fire Brandon Staley. They get a new coach. Gif, Jif, whatever the fuck his name was, and they only lose by three points. So, not bad, but not bad performance by them. Bills are going to need to play well against a team that went in and beat a playoff contender last week. Uh, very, very good playoff contender, and you know, basically ended a man's career. That's what the Patriots did. And Bills, you know, this is a must-win for the Bills. What do you think? Yeah, I don't. I, I think the Bills are playing as good as anybody right now. I, I don't think uh, Bailey Zappi slips them up. I. I to be fair, I didn't think that uh, Bailey Zappi would end a man's career last uh, a previously considered a Hall of Fame level quarterback. I didn't think he'd will end his career in one uh, fateful. If the Broncos season. had Bailey Zappi, we'd be eleven and four right now. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I'll, I'll tell you what. I think it, well, if we had Bailey Zappi and Sean Payton bought into him and let him uh, actually work the offense around him to his strengths, then yeah, I think that we would be eleven and four. But um, you give the Bills by a million. I, I the Bills by a million. They, yeah, I agree. Twelve's a lot of points. I I don't know if I would actually put money on that, but I agree. And you know, Bill Belichick, the Broncos have always kind of beat up on the Patriots, especially in Denver. Bill Belichick really wanted that one. He's know he's not winning the division. He likes Josh Allen. You know, just let him let him win one. That's what he's going to say. Get, get us a good draft pick. He's still a homeboy. You know, he still loves the Patriots, even though he might not be there next season. So. Um, so we do have a list of games that we're kind of just skirt by right over and talk about the important ones. So Falcons bears, we can make a quick pick and then move on. Uh, Falcons bears. I like the bears are playing good football. So give me the bears minus three in, in Chicago. I'm, I'm just a huge fan of Desmond Ritter. I think the bears get rittered this week. Tyler Heineke's the starter. Uh, Desmond Ritter's got the aura. Okay. All right. As well, you're as an idiot. Roster, he's got a chance. Yep. Yep. Good, you know, good analysis. Should, yeah. Maybe we should go uh, cut Kirk for, for Desmond Ritter. Yeah, there you go. That's a championship winning caliber team right there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, next game. Big for the Texans. Big for the uh, AFC South implications. T Titans at Texans in Houston. Minus three and a half. Is, we're on CJ Stroud watch. Will he be playing? It looks like it. Okay. So, yeah, give me the Texans then. If that's the case, give me the Texans. They need a win. They need, they need to get right. Um, you know, it's funny as I can't even remember who they played last week. This weekend was like a blur. Like there were so many games on so many days. Like there was Thursday night football, Sunday night, Saturday night football, Sunday football, Monday, three I, games on Monday. There was just so many days, so many different things. My brain's fucking jumbled right now. And, my mental and on top of that, bowl games. Forged. Yeah. Bowl mental games mental. on top of that. I'm not, I'm sitting here fucking sweating Texas State and Rice and I got fucking the, uh, 
the Ravens playing on playing in the background is crazy. It was it was, it was awesome. It was a great week in sports. To be they yeah uh, they lost to the Browns last week. Okay. Oh yeah, that was that's right. That was, we we literally just said it like ten minutes ago. I was like, yeah, Mark Cooper and Joe Flacco just throwing the ball around in Houston. <laughs> yeah, they need to win. Uh, when it comes down to the AFC South, and you know the Colts are at, you know facing the Raiders, I think the Colts win that game. I think I think AFC South winner is going to be the Colts. What do you think? Let me look at the playoffs. I mean, I I'm at, I'm really Jaguars worried. are leading right now, but. I mean, the Jaguars are just imploding. They have Carolina, so if they win, they have the tiebreaker against the Colts, it looks like. I don't know. I really don't. I think it might yeah. be the Colts to win that division. I, well, I don't like the Colts. I don't like the Jaguars. Then I think we should meet in the middle and say the Texans. All right, Texans it is. Huzzah. Texans are going to win the play. Or Texans are going to win I the mean, that, that, That's good business right there. That's, mm-hmm. that, that's how you cut a deal. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, Col- yeah, Colts are playing against Las Vegas. Jaguars against the Carolina Panthers. It's going to be tough for them to lose that one. It's going to be really tough for them to lose that one. But, hey, Carolina could win one. Who knows? Who knows? Player of the week, Bryce Young. Almost. Almost. If he would have led that well, comeback. would have been, been the third player of the week against uh, the Packers. It would have been great. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're on Texans this one. That's our new pick. That's uh, We're pro Texans podcast at this point. Can't wait. Kareem Jackson, our favorite player, he's back on the Texans. So, oh, they're going to be hidden. They're going to be hidden. Oh, man. Somebody might oh, die in that game. Also, just a quick shout out to my aforementioned fantasy team. We already got 33 points on the board with David Njoku and the Browns defense. Yeah, so I think they just scored two touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> I, as we were talking, they scored two touchdowns. Yeah, let's go, dude. All right. Uh, we're dialed in. The championship man. Well, we might just have to crown you right here. I mean, that, I, I, I would feel a lot better if I could just. If you win back. the championship this weekend, I need you to know I'm calling in sick next week. That's fair. Well, I, <laughs> or I'll get a stand in. I'm just gonna get a cardboard cutout. Well, if if I don't win, then that means Tyler wins, and he is also on this show. Oh fuck! So well, I I think we just gotta cancel next week's episode. Yeah, I don't I don't want to be here. This is terrible. I'm in last place. <laughs> throw up. All right, moving on. Uh, Rams Giants. Don't really care about this game. Give me the Rams. Rams are good. Rams are really really good. Yeah, uh, Puka Nakua scores five touchdowns. Puka! Yeah. Yeah, Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup probably does something. I'm assuming he'll do something. Like, I don't know. Disappoint me again, like he did this year in fantasy football. Uh, Matt Stafford's still really good at football. Who would have thought? It turns out he's not over the hill. He's not old. And hey, he might you know, be the guy to end the Lions' dynasty. Wouldn't that, oh, wouldn't that be up. heartbreakingly funny? <sighs> it would be so funny. That's what I kind of want for... Like best case scenario, five years from now, they realize Patrick Mahomes is too expensive. He can't keep him. It's so much easier just to take a new quarterback. Patrick Mahomes just goes to like the fucking. Hold on, let me find the team. Let me pull one out. Get, like, oh, he goes to the Steelers. Patrick Mahomes just goes to the Steelers, and he just fucking comes. He just comes ripping. Just ends the Chiefs. Nah, it doesn't really track. I don't know. We'll figure something out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the, I'm gonna hit the workshop. We're gonna yeah. hit the, you know, we're gonna figure it out. But. um Anyway, what were we talking about? Matt Stafford and the Lions. Yeah. No, that would be hilarious. Big fan. <laughs> All right. Cardinals, Eagles. Feels like the Eagles are looking to get right, go on a run. And, I mean, what better way to tune up than against the Cardinals? Even though Tyler doesn't believe in those things. <laughs> yeah. Um, boy, I the Eagles should win, and they should win by more than 10 and a half points. They should think they're 10 and a half points better, but it just feels like another spot for them to let me down and to let them make yeah. me down. Even so, they, they kind of let me down last week too with against the Giants. Like they had that big yeah. lead and they just let it slip. And I don't, did they even cover? I don't even remember what the spread was. Yeah, I don't, know. I, I, I don't know what's going on with them. I mean, eventually. They, weird. they don't have an identity, it feels like. Yeah, yeah eventually it's going to click and they're, you know, back to being one of the two or three best teams in, in, in the league. But until then, I'll I'll take the points. I, I think the Eagles pull it off. But I, yeah, I would take the points for the Cardinals. Ten and a half is a lot. I'm right there with you, Saints, Bucks, Buccaneers. I think they can clinch the division with a win here. Am I wrong? Boy, what a disgusting team to get in the playoffs. I love it. Oh, I know. But anything for anybody is yeah, anybody from that division would have been disgusting. I think the Falcons need to lose and they need to win. But other than that, um, I think they clinch. The Falcons being in the driver's seat is criminal. Give me Baker Mayfield or give me death. 
Yeah, it's the Falcons are so like it's so unfortunate. Actually, I think they win in their end. I think they win and they have the division because they're eight and seven. Both the Saints and the Falcons are seven and eight. So I guess they could lose two more, but if they don't, then they win one. Yeah, should be good. So yeah, it sounds like if they win, they win the division. Yeah, give me Baker Mayfield. Give me the division. Let's go. Let's ride. Um, Steelers, Seahawks, two teams that are in the you know in contention for the seventh seed. Steelers on the outside looking in as of right now. Seahawks in the seventh seed in the NFC. If they win, their playoff chances jump from sixty nine to eighty eight. If they lose, they drop down to forty. If the Steelers lose, they're pretty much out of it. If they win, they're still pretty much out of it. So there's really not much movement for them. I think the Seahawks are a better team. I really like the Steelers' defense, but I just don't trust their offense. So give me the Seahawks. You see, I'll say that they, they win because of their offense. It seems like for whatever reason, after getting rid of Matt Canada, that they've started to put together some, some good ball. And I think that's, uh, that's enough to beat the Seahawks. Now, if the Seahawks were to uh, make a halftime change to Drew Locke, I would absolutely flip this. I think Drew Locke's the X Factor, but if he's on the bench, give me the give me the Steelers. I'm right there with you. Next game we got Bengals at Chiefs. Uh Chiefs minus seven in KC. They're imploding. I don't think they win another game the rest of their franchise history. So I think Jake Browning, the Jake Browning experience is coming into KC and he's gonna light them up. Torch them. They're done. Give me you the know, Bengals. The the satire is fun, but they also still have Patrick Mahomes, which scares me to death. So, no, they're probably going to win this game by like forty-five, and they probably won't yeah. lose the rest of the season. Well, and, and that's what I'm afraid of. I mean, same thing. And by the rest of the season, I mean win the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and just, just like the Eagles, I'm I'm worried because I've seen, I thought I've seen the Chiefs crumble in the past, but then it's just that's it. That's all they need. Patrick Mahomes gets one nonsense call from the from the officials, and then they're all back on good terms, and then he go, goes on a run, and wins the Super Bowl. And I just don't think the Bengals are quite good enough to to stop that from happening. Yeah, well, it's not that the Bengals are good enough. Is I just don't think Jake Browning is good enough. And there's one yeah, thing that we forget yeah. with all the troubles with the you know the Chiefs offense, you know, which we've seen lighted up since you know, he got into the league and became the starter. We just thought we're forgetting this season that the Chiefs have a really good defense, and that defense is going to play in January and February probably, and. The, you know, Jake Browning, I don't think he can withstand that defense and that pass rush and that onslaught. And I, they're not going to be able to run the ball. They have too many guys up front. The front seven is really, really good. I, yeah, you're right. All jokes aside, give me the Chiefs. But um, if in a perfect world, the Bengals win. The Chiefs are going to win despite having Patrick Mahomes. Yep. <laughs> I like that. They're just like a quarterback that. away from being real dangerous. Yeah. Who, who, uh, maybe a Drew Locke type? You know, that kind of archetype? That might work. Would, Ooh, Russell Wilson would trade one for ball. one. I would ball my eyes. If he went to the KC? Yeah. I mean, it might happen, so I'm just prepare yourself. He's from Missouri. He's dating. He dated the fucking Chiefs daughter, owner daughter. See, and that's why I thought it would have, I was going to be so perfect. He he was going to be the one to end the Chiefs streak. He's like the fucking the prince who was promised. Yeah. It's like the fucking the Capulets and the Montagues. George Payton took that from us. Yeah. And fucking gave away the house. I don't know about George Payton sometimes, dude. I just – somebody needs to pay for this Russell Wilson situation that my brain's in, and I want blood, and I haven't seen any blood spilled yet, and it's getting on my nerves. Yeah. I I, I love – I want to move on. I want to live my life happy, but I just can't. Yeah, I, I've been a big-time George Payton defender, and I, I, I don't think I can anymore. I think – I think now that Sean Payton's kind of running the show, we can keep him to kind of handle some of the, like the fringe stuff that mm-hmm. I think that he's actually really good at. Mm-hmm. But I am okay if he's not the one who picks the quarterback or the coach ever again. I mean, his first draft class is not turning out to be very great, if I remember correctly. Granted, this is a tweet that I saw like four weeks ago, so I could be completely talking out of my ass. But I'm pretty sure. I'm trying to remember. What I don't know. That's another was. show. Yeah, another show. Was that 2021? Was that 2001? 2021? I think so. Okay. Eh, whatever. Bengals, or sorry, uh, Chargers, Broncos. Give me the Chargers. Broncos are kind of, I mean, Jared Sitter's really not going to do much. Chargers are going to be pissed off. They have to do a coach. I think they come in and win this game. No, because now Sean Payton's going to turn it up and he's going to develop this great offense around his quarterback, Jared Stidham, and they're going to win this football game. Just like he did for his quarterback, Russell Wilson. No, 
Not like that. If oh, okay, had, different. If different. If he had done that, but the Broncos would be in the playoffs. But he did not. Mm-hmm. So we lost yeah. to the Patriots on Christmas Eve at home. Lost to Bailey Zapp. I wa- I was so excited to watch that game too. I I do, and I was telling my fiance about it. I was like, no, baby, it, no, trust me, it's gonna be so much different than last year. Last mm-hmm. year, the the Broncos were you know starting to put some pieces together late down the season. That you know we weren't in the playoffs, but we were gonna you know we're making good things happen. The Rams are one of the worst teams in, in football. We're not gonna lose this game. I didn't see we're gonna be on Nickelodeon, so it's gonna be silly. No, dude, all of that was wrong. All that happened again, just in a just different manner. disaster almost immediately. I mean, at least we didn't and then whenever we got that first play fumble, that you know that sack fumble. God, imagine if he just ran that in instead of just falling on his fat fucking face. Sorry, I was, that was mean. I was that was mean. That was, it was mean. a little mean, but worthy because I mean, we got zero points out of that drive. Dude, thanks. Yeah, shot. yeah. All right, moving on. Packers Vikings last game of the weekend. Uh, give me the Vikings to win this game. They still need to win to keep their playoffs up alive. I really like Kevin O'Connell as a coach. I, it seems like every time I see him on the sideline, he's talking to guys. He's taking control. Like that's his team, and you can just tell that the guys really respond to him. It's been he's had a tough go of it this season. And I heard somebody say a couple of weeks ago, you know, I think it was this weekend. You know, Kirk Cousins is their starting quarterback all season. Are we talking about you know Super Bowl? Are we talking about like the one seed, two seed Vikings? I kind of believe that because they were kind of getting hot when he tore his Achilles. They're still a really good football team. They just had inconsistent quarterback play since. And I think, I mean, it's funny to say because we said it with past, you know, the Chiefs. You know, they're just quarterback away. They're quarterback away from making something happen. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think the, the the Vikings are a genuine contender. I love Kevin O'Connell. It makes me sad that uh, you know certain teams selected Nathaniel Hackett over Kevin O'Connell, but um, I, I'm I'm very happy for all my Vikings friends fans. They they've been tortured their entire lives, and I think they win this game. Um, a to keep their own playoff hopes alive, but mostly to ruin the playoff hopes of the Packers. I think that would be equally as, as satisfying for them. And I'm yeah, gonna... well, I don't. I think the Packers playoffs up are a foregone conclusion at this point. I don't even think they're in. Yeah, but this contention. is like the nail in the coffin. Yeah, yeah. If they lose, they go down to one percent. So if they win, they're up to fifty-five. So this is a big game. Actually, no, you're right. This is a big game for them. Yeah. I don't need some help for sure at seven and eight, but yeah, this is a big game for them for sure. Um, that's it. That's the slate. That's week seventeen. We have two more weeks left. Um. I can't wait for the playoffs. I think it's going to be a really good playoffs. I think there's a lot of teams that also, I mean, a lot of teams have a lot of, you know, have, a, have at least one flaw, but a lot of the teams are also really, really good. So I can't wait to see what happens and kind of how the whole thing shakes out. Yeah. And that's, you know, kind of my favorite part about the NFL is how messy the last couple of weeks get. And I'm excited to see mm-hmm. how it shapes up. And it's so funny with the, you know, week 18 and everything, we thought, oh, people are going to be sitting a lot more. You know, there's going to be, you know, at least week 18 is going to be the worst week. Honestly, historically, week 18 has been one of the better weeks of the season. Uh, and then you have, you know, you don't have the bye week, week one, or you only have, you only have the one seed getting the bye week. And that just means just, it makes it all that more important, all that more meaningful. I think the NFL did a good, too. Hey, I'll say it. The NFL did a good job adding an 18th or 18th week to the schedule. Yeah, I was skeptical, too, because I, I th- th- there's just something very, very pleasing about how the previous format was because the, they had it broken down. So if you get the one seed, you get home field advantage. You, there's a 50% chance that that team goes to the Super Bowl. And then it goes down to 25% chance if you make it at the second seed, you get the first round by. And then it's kind of a crapshoot after that. Mm-hmm. But it, to me, it was very um, – <coughs> like the OCD part of my brain very much enjoyed that and those numbers. But as a football fan, getting six games week uh, on wild card weekends – um, and I don't think that there's been such a negative impact on like the the upper middle class of of each conference where I thought there would be without there being a second buy. Um, I I think it's it's been a net win, net win, and the Broncos still can't make the playoffs. Don't mention it. It is unfortunate, and I know you can say this about every single season, but it seems like the NFL has an injury problem. I mean, it's one of the most violent sports in the world. I get it, but it's just seeing all these great players down and like the level of play, just the offensive stats are all down and quarterback play in the league is just down like a lot. You know, you have guys like, you know, like I'm seeing, is that Trevor Simeon that I'm watching on my TV television screen right now? Like I'm so tired of that guy too. It's, it's not fun right now to, for, you know, to watch a lot of teams play offensive football. Yeah, that's true. That's a good so level of play needs to get better. But other than that, it's been a fun season so far and sucks that it's almost over, but I'm, I can't look forward to baseball season. 
the Mets aren't going to be good. So I just have to look forward to next football season. We're we're on to we're on to August. I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm so tired. I mean, guys, All right. Just thinking Go about ahead. the off season of the NFL. Not, the Broncos don't have a quarterback anymore. I'm so tired. What what what? So if uh, I don't like. I don't like getting guys in free agency, but if there's one position you think we should go get a veteran guy, like a really good guy, like I'm talking top tier, what position would that be in your I, mind? So I, I definitely don't think that's on the table this year for the Broncos because we still have to pay Russell Wilson. Mm-hmm. But if money wasn't an issue and that contract just magically fell off the table, I think wide receiver would be the, should be the number one target. Yeah, go get a stud wide receiver. Yeah, I don't know who will be out there for it, but it's gonna be um, t- it's gonna be Slim Pickens most likely. I, I love Cortland Sutton. They're not gonna bring back Tim Patrick on that contract. Um, Jerry Judy's been a nightmare. Uh yeah, I think you gotta go get a wide receiver. Yeah, well, the good thing about Jerry Judy, he didn't fumble the bag; he just straight dropped it. He just he couldn't catch it. He kept so. trying to throw it to him. Yeah, he, he did. Dropped it. God damn it, dude! I just want him to be good. I just want him to be. I just I want was, to have a good player. I was so excited. I mean, granted, so was I. I was like, oh wait, they fucking those idiot Raiders took Henry Ruggs. Jerry Judy just fell right into our lap. That's awesome. Turns out we're idiots. I mean, they're idiots, definitely too. No, they're, they're definitely they're, they're bigger idiots. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But then to watch like Justin Jefferson get taken like two picks. Oh, later. I forgot that was the same draft. Oh man, I feel like there was somebody else in that draft. That's just CD Lamb was in that draft. CD Lamb was. In yeah, that he draft. got taken. I think right after Jerry Judy got taken. <sighs> Or maybe yeah. they even had the pick before. I can't remember, but whatever. We're just – it's fine. It's whatever. It's fine. Um, what was the best thing you saw all weekend, Brandon, as we wrap up the show? Anything in particular you know, catch your eye? I mean, bowl season for college football. I mean, the, uh, a lot of this network's built around college football. Uh, bowl season's been fantastic. I'm a big Big 12 homer, mm-hmm. uh, and I think that they're shining bright because um, it means more in the Big 12. We don't have a bunch of opt-outs and transfers like the – the Ash Cheeks Conference or the uh, Sucks Eggs Conference. So, yeah, bowl season's been been my favorite. Um, best thing I've seen all weekends. Um, and Santa Claus, he came by this mm-hmm. weekend. Santa Claus did come by this weekend. Yeah. Motherfucker passed out on my couch. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I hope he left the ottoman alone. <laughs> he did leave the ottoman alone. Thank God, he did leave the ottoman yes. alone. Tyler was no, Tyler was not in the vicinity, nor was he in the state. So, ottoman, all ottomans in Virginia were safe this weekend. Uh, best thing I saw this weekend actually happened today, Thursday. I was watching the Pop Tarts Bowl. What an incredible bowl game! What an incredible mascot! What an incredible trophy! The Pop Tarts Bowl. I'm, I it's hope awesome. it's here to stay. And I want. I don't want the national championship. Give me the Pop Tart Bowl. Yeah, Pop Tart Bowl. The ma- I mean, bowl games are just so fun, and it's such a great some of them. Well, I mean, e- even the ones that kind of stink, like uh, uh, like Jacksonville State or Jackson State get, getting on, but they're on like ESPN and ABC, and I think that's so cool that even like those lesser programs um, get this prime time opportunity to kind of show their their great season. And mm-hmm. I, I was not a fan <clears throat> of uh, all the mayo that was consumed on my television last night for the mayo bowl. But... I saw him dump that mayo, and don't get me wrong, I'm a mayo guy, but that looked just gross. yeah, it's a it's a lot. I'm not a fan of that, but um, it's fun. And I appreciate it. Yeah. Did you see, did you watch, like, so I was watching the Pop-Tart game at the ball or at the bar before I left and they had a human Pop-Tart mascot. He was in a toaster. They popped him out and he just sprinted around everywhere. Oh, it was so funny. <laughs> it's it so funny. It's so I miss funny. that. I, it. I, oh, I want to be in the Pop-Tart. You gotta, there's gotta be a clip on Twitter somewhere. You gotta find there's it. There's gotta be. Post it on our social too. So, so the people can see it. <laughs> Um, well, that's it for me, Brandon. Uh, tight 30 like we usually do. So happy that we were able to keep okay. everything on pace. <laughs> uh, new mic uh, feels good. Yeah, Hopefully it yeah. sounds good. We'll see. Uh, ushering in a new era. Sunday with Sundays with the sprinkles um, minus Tyler. So I don't have anything else to add. Brandon, any final thoughts, words, anything? Nope. Just, uh, you know, another day being a miserable Broncos fan. I'm glad that the whole... Um, they didn't waste any time. I'll say that. They did not waste any time. They said, fuck it. Hey, we're out. Let's get you know, let's cut the cord. Let's get rid of it. Oh, yes, dude. Yes. It's so fucking cool. God, that Pop-Tart's so awesome. I, yeah, I love this. I, love I don't know this. why. It's, is that is that just a gif? Oh, yeah. It's no. There's a guy eating a Pop-Tart. Yeah. He's trying, 
working yeah. on the job. I just think you're a little I choppy for me. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Sundays with the Sprinkles. Um, as always, you can find us on YouTube, Spotify, and I believe we're on Apple Podcasts now. So please go in, like, and subscribe, download our episodes. Anything helps. We have fun doing this, but obviously, if um, you know, you tell us what you like, what you don't like. If you like the new microphone, leave a comment. Let Brandon know what works, what doesn't. Um, and also, Brett if you Spring- don't like us, just lie to us. Ooh, yeah, that too. The algorithm yeah. doesn't need to know that you're lying. Yeah, I have a very like I have a low self esteem, so if you say something bad about me, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna believe you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you guys so much for listening for Tyler Sprinkle, Brandon Shanahan. I am Brett Sprinkle. Uh, we will see you guys next week. Thank you.